Hi, my name is Dr. Arnold. I'm a dentist in Preston, Lancashire. And today I want to talk about um, the topic of what it means to be rich. Now, it's a question that gets asked a lot in different circles. And, you know, when people think of dentists, I work as a dentist, people just think that all dentists are rich. Um, so I just wanted to really look into this and, you know, is this true? Um, and just look into what it means to be rich. So an article I found online, uh, he does a good job of looking at this. If we look at this article uh, by financial expert, Dakota UK, um, it starts to look at that question of how much money do you need um, to feel rich? What does it really mean to be rich? Um, so they say that YouGov conducted a poll in 2017 uh, where people give their opinion on you know, whether different income levels were poor, neither rich or poor or rich. What was the lowest levels of income that the consensus of the survey respondents agreed was rich? And it looks like it was £60,500 of income per year. Now look at um, the average income uh, for dentists it's usually around the 70,000 mark. Um, so going by this figure, dentists would actually be considered rich by the general public. Um, so the median wage, the middle wage was 31,461 pounds. So if you're earning more than that 31,461, you can consider yourself lucky because you are um, on the top half of earners. So the dictionary, Oxford Dictionaries, defines rich as having a great deal of assets and money. In contrast, many people earning £35,000 per year may manage to save very little of their income and consider themselves short of cash. Now, in this definition, it introduces uh, the concept of assets and not just the money that you've got in the bank account. Um, and personally, I think that's where um, being truly rich comes in uh, or being wealthy when you've now got assets and not just the money in your bank account. So they asked the question, what do the top 1% earn? So that 60,000 was the top 10%. Now we're looking at the top 1% of earners in the UK. So the Institute for Fiscal Studies has calculated this figure as 160,000 pounds. Um, this is a very difficult salary to achieve in most career paths as the most senior jobs in many professions does not reach £160,000. Um, here are examples of jobs which can pay £160,000 salaries. Uh, so partners of legal, accounting, actuarial, architects and other professional service firms, senior bankers and traders, wealth managers uh, such as fund managers and hedge fund managers, senior doctors and surgeons, key talent in the sport and entertainment industries, company directors, or senior civil servants. Um, within dentistry, um, you can definitely be earning uh, 160,000 uh, pounds within um, your lifetime. Um, if you want to look at some of the videos I've done on earnings within dentistry, you can have a look at those afterwards, but you can definitely be earning 160,000 pounds within dentistry. Uh, it's not impossible to, to be doing that. I think with dentistry, you can actually be in a fortunate position to earn very well and to be in the top 1% of earners in the UK. So the definition of rich has never had a pound value attached to it in the dictionary, not least because of inflation, the number continues to rise, but more meaningfully, it's because the sense of feeling rich is a relative experience. If an average earning professional lived with a family who was dependent on government benefits, they would feel rich by contrast. So if you earned the average, I think that they said it was around the 30,000 mark, and you, were some, and you were with a family that was dependent on the government, you earning that 30,000 would actually feel rich. It's relative to your circumstance and who you're comparing yourself to. An average earning professional would see the sacrifices and limited choices available to the family who are in benefits and compare this to the relative abundance of choices they have in where they live, what they eat, and where they go on holiday. Uh, so you might have the opportunity to be able to go away on a holiday, even though it's once a year or twice a year. 
Um, you might be able to decide where you want to eat any given day of the week. Um, that is a, a luxury and option. Where you live, you might be able to afford to live in certain places that a family that's dependent on the government can't choose to live. If a top earning head teacher on a salary of £90,000 visited the annual Davos conference in Switzerland each year and rubbed shoulders with groups of billionaires, they would suddenly feel very pure, very poor um, in contrast. So we can conclude that the feeling of wealth is partially dependent upon your surroundings and who you view as your peers. So again, it points to the fact that in terms of how rich you feel, it's always going to depend on who you're surrounded by. If you're surrounded by people that are not doing as well as you, you're going to feel richer. If you surround yourself with people that are millionaires and billionaires, you're going to feel poor uh, in contrast. So it's all relative. So we now start to look at some new terms. So is rich the same as financially independent? And this is where it now gets interesting. So far we have equated rich with a level of income. We haven't spoken about net assets and wealth. Your net asset amount is what you'd have left to your name if you sold enough assets to pay off any debts you owe. If you don't have any debts, then your total savings, property and investments is your net asset value. Uh, some people would, we would widely agree are rich from an income, income perspective, may have little to no wealth. You may uh, be rich uh, in terms of your income, but you might actually have no wealth. Um, and this is where I would say high earners, like in dentistry, uh, can fall into that category of having a high, high earnings or high income, but not really having much in terms of wealth. This is money reported in 2021 that 25% of people earning over 100,000 per year had little to no savings for a rainy day. So even though you might be earning over 100,000, could you survive um, for let's say six months if you didn't earn any more? And that shows you um, how robust your savings are um, and how wealthy you really are. How long could you go without ever earning until um, you would start to struggle? If you spend every penny you earn and have no financial, financial resilience as a result, can you be classed as rich? If you lost your job or had an unexpected expense and you needed to borrow money from a bank or family, can you be considered rich? Uh, this is where the concept of financial independence comes into the fold. Uh, this is achieved when you have enough net wealth to live off indefinitely for the rest of your life. Okay, so they say that to be financially independent, uh, you've got enough money to be able to live off indefinitely for the rest of your life. So not just three or six months like I was saying, but indefinitely for the rest of your life. And I can say personally, I'm not at that stage yet. Um, and that's why I don't consider myself wealthy, uh, because I'm not at that. Um, sort of level where I could live indefinitely without ever earning again. Roughly speaking, you can be said to be independent if the interest and dividends of your investments are sufficient to live off. For many people, this is a good definition of being rich because it releases you from the need to work as an employee. If you're living off your capital alone, it suggests that you have an abundance of it. This is known as being a rentier. So this concept of having an asset or assets becomes really important so you can become financially independent and that is why uh, people will start investing into uh, funds or investing into property or starting businesses uh, because the work you do let's say as a dentist um, once you stop working that income stops so you need to um, use your income that you're generating now and place it into assets so that when you're not able to work or you're not working, that you still have some sort of income that is able to support you. Are you rich if you're a millionaire? Now, if you say to someone, is a millionaire rich? The average person will say yes. And um, well, in this article, they actually said, they actually say that one million pounds um, is higher than the 660,000 pounds, which is said to be the net assets you'd need to join the top 1% of wealthiest Brits. So definitely if you're a millionaire um, and your net wealth is a million, then you can definitely be considered 
um, as being rich. Are you rich if you're a billionaire? Um, I think most of us in this article says would happily agree that a billionaire is classed as rich. Billionaires have so much wealth that money is almost no object. Only when spending money on entire businesses and vast properties could a billionaire hit their limit. The average new car in the UK costs about £25,000 and represents a big purchase for most households. A millionaire with £1 million in the bank would afford to fill a small car park with 40 new cars. A billionaire, on the other hand, could afford to fill several football pitches with 40,000 new cars. Um, I like to use real-world examples to try and convey the difference in scale between 1 million and 1 billion. In our minds, these words might sound similar and conjure up similar imagery, think palm trees and sports cars, but they really are worlds apart. So being a billionaire, um, very likely that you're going to be considered rich and wealthy. And unless you've got a lot of debt um, as a billionaire, um, it's like that you're going to be in that uh, wealthy category. So I hope that starts to shed some light on the conversation of what does it mean to be rich, to feel rich, um, what is being wealthy, what is being financially independent. Um, let me know in the comments section if you have any questions and I'll see you guys at the next video.